welcome back to another lesson and in today's lesson we're gonna do paper one exam 2019 and we'll go through question five which is about exponential functions so let's get started so question five says sketched below is a graph of f of x is equal to k to the power x and you are told that k is greater than zero and you are given a point four and 16 that is on f or that is an f of x without starting with any questions you need to point some stuff out that the point zero is to one is always given and you also given a second point of 16 and you are told that k is greater than zero so just bear that in mind so let's get started 5.1 says determine the value of k where is k you given that f of x is equal to k to the power x so we need to solve for k okay so this is 5.1 we know that y is equal to k of x you can keep it to f of x if you want so how do i get then solve for k you take any point other than the point zero is to one so you are given the second point which is 4 and 16 and this is x and this is y so what do you do with this point you substitute there and now you have 16 is equal to k to the power 4 and then what you do next is that you change this to be the same exponent as a, your right hand side so we can rewrite 16 as 2 to the power 4 and then this is equal to k to the power 4 so this could have been negative 2 to the power 4 which will also give you 16 right but then you were told that the value of k which is here has to be greater than zero so the second solution does not fit in so what you have now you can just equate that k is equal to 2 and you are done and this means you have your two points 5.2 is telling you that the graph g it's a new graph because the, the the graph you had previously is f graph g is obtained by reflecting graph f about the line y is equal to x determine the equation of g in the form of y so now you need to understand what the question is asking the question is asking you to reflect f about the line y is equal to x so what do you know about this equation you can tell that here you are trying to find an inverse you are trying to find an inverse of f this is another word to say y is equal to s because you are inverting so how do we do that so we have now f of x is equal to 2 to the power x right and we are told that y is equal to x this means in a place of x you're gonna put y and in a place of y you're gonna put x so the second step is that we have x is equal to 2 to the power y but then the question said we should write it in the form of y is equal to so how do we do that what do you know about an inverse of an exponential we know that an inverse of an exponential is a logarithmic function right so this means we need to write this in the form of a log function because we are trying to make y the subject of the formula so how do we then do that so this is what the log says from from the given equation it asks what is an exponent that gives us x and has a base of 2 and this is the exponent and that exponent is y you can read it out like that for yourself so it's easy to understand so it's asking what is an exponent that gives you x when you have a base of 2 and that is y so this is the same thing as that we just converted that for y to be the function of the formula so now the equation is y is equal to log base 2 x and that is also 2 max easy for max so already you have four marks in the bag so these are some of the questions that you should always get without having to struggle because all the time when they ask you something like this it's not going to change the concept is not going to change you're just going to apply the basics so we go to 5.3 and it has four marks so we need to be smart here it says sketch the graph of g indicate on your graph the coordinates of the two of two points on g but this is not any difficult because you already have all the information that you need you know that g of x is equal to log 2x so how do you then plot this okay let's redraw so let's redraw the given graph because the answer is on this graph 
So you have a point there and you have a point there. And then this point is 4 and 16 and this point is 0 and 1. This is f of x. So now what you know is that you were told that to get g of x, y is equal to x. So this applied on in every point. So from the point of 4 and 16, you know that you would have a new point that would translate to 16 and 4. So you can already write that point down. That okay, now I have 16 and 14. And the point and the point 0 is to 1 will translate to 1 is to 0. And you can draw that point down there. And another thing, you can see that your, your original graph has an asymptote of y is equal to 0. Meaning y should not be equal to 0. So that is your asymptote. Now you have an asymptote of x is equal to 0, which is this line. So what you can do, you can also draw this line here. So this is the line y is equal to x. And this is your new graph. Yeah, this is G. But yeah, you can see that it's it's bad, but that's how it's going to look like. And then you can just write your point 16 is to 4 and 1 is to 0. And then you have your four points because you have the two points and you're good to go. So this will give you four marks. And you have already eight marks, which came easy, like the answers are just here. So we get to 5.4. It says use your graph to determine the values of x for which f of x and g of x when multiplied together are greater than zero. So you're looking at the y values. The y values, the two y values of the graphs when multiplied together should be zero because f of x is y and g of x is y of the second graph. So they should be zero. And you are looking for x values. So this is how you should interpret the question. So we want to look when these are above the line y is equal to zero. So what you can do, I'm going to take a different color. So what you can do is that you want to see when these graphs are above this line when multiplied together, right? So this position you can, you, you won't consider because g of x is not defined in this, in this, um, in this section. So you can see here from this point when x is greater than one, this is x is greater than 1. And then from this position, you see f is positive. And then g is negative. And positive times a negative, you know that it's a negative. Therefore, this is not greater than 0. So you are looking at this part. Because these f and g, f and g are both greater than zero. So when you multiply a positive times a positive, you get a positive and it's greater than zero. Now, the reason why I do not talk about the point where x is equal to one exactly, because g is zero and zero times a positive is equal to zero. And the question said they want when f times g is greater than zero and not equal to zero. And if it said it was equal to zero, you would have put that point. Therefore, your answer is x should be greater than one. And that is it. Okay, 5.4.2 says the determine the values of x for which now only g of x is less or equal to minus 1. So it's only talking about g of x, so there's no need for you to look at f of x. So what you do now is you write what they're saying down. So this is 5.4.2. Uh, so you want to the values of x for which g of x is less or equal to negative 1. So you can go to your graph. Let's say this is negative 1. We are just writing negative 1. And you will draw your line there. This is just for representation sake. That line is not there. So you want the values for which this is less than negative 1. So you, this means here, you want that point. And it said or oh, equal to. So you need to be considerate. So this is the point you're looking at. So you want this point on the graph. You want the x values. This x values for which the graph is less or equal to 1. So what you do now, you are given your graph as y equal to log 2 of x. And now for you to find the values of x, you can go back to this form. 
and then you know that you are told that this is minus one and the values of x will be half so this is just this just means x is equal to half you did not give the range for which x is defined for this scenario therefore you can now write x is the element of zero and half and half is included because we are also including minus one the reason why i'm in um uh, x uh, equal to zero is excluded is because this graph is not defined when x is equal to zero because it's an asymptote so that is your answer and you get another two points the last question which has also four marks says if h of x this is a third graph now do not confuse they're telling you if h of x is equal to f of minus x calculate the values of x calculate the value of x for which f of x minus h of x is equal to 15 over 4. So these kind of questions seem to be complicated, but they are not. You just have to write what they're saying and then solve whatever comes out of the expression. So how do we solve this? We're now on 5.5. So it's saying h of x is equal to f of minus x, right? So wherever you see x, you're going to put minus x to obtain h of x. So this is f of x, 2 to the power x. Now h of x is equal to 2 to the power minus x. Can you see that? Because wherever you see x, it's telling you to put negative x. This is what that expression means. So you're already done with this point. So that is a point already because you understood what the question was asking, but you're not done. So you go to the second point. So now it's telling you that f of x minus h of x is equal to 15 over 4. Okay, again, you know that, okay, I know what f of x is, which is 2 to the power x. You write that down. Minus, you also know now what is h of x, which is 2 to the power minus x, which is equal to 15 over 4. And this is just an expression now that you have to solve. Okay, you also know that 2 of x minus this, you can rewrite and say 2 to the power x is equal to 15 of x. 15 over 4, I mean. So what you can do now, you can choose to say, let k or anything, it could be x, but because we already have x, you do not put x so that you do not get confused. So we're going to choose that, okay, 2 to the power x is equal to m. It can be any variable. So wherever we see 2 to the power x, we're going to put m. So here we have m minus 1 over m is equal to 15 over 4. So we can multiply. We can multiply by m. And then we have m squared minus 1 is equal to 15 over 4m. Okay, we're going to finish this here. And then we can multiply by 4 now. And then we're going to have 4 times m squared minus 4 is equal to 15m. And then we take that to the other side and we have 4m minus 15m minus 4 is equal to 0. Now you can solve this as a quadratic equation. So which will be, this can be 4m times m, which will give you 4m squared. And then you find the factors of 4 that can assist you to get 15 when you have 4 on the side. And that will be 4 times 1. 4 times 1 because you have 16 minus 1. So you want to try and find that this, the bigger one, should be negative so that you can get minus 15. Or you can solve it any way that you normally solve your quadratic equation. But this is just a quadratic equation. And you will find that m is equal to minus 1 over 4 and m is equal to 4. And now you know that m is equal to 2 to the power x. So this is 2 to the power x, 2, or 2 to the power x is equal to 4 or 2 to the power 2 this will give you 2x is equal to negative 2 to the x i mean to the power 2 and then this will give you that x is equal to 2 so this will not be applicable because this we do not have that option since you said when we were solving for k at that time it has to be greater than 0 and then now we know that x is equal to 2 and your answer is x equal to 2. You can go back and, and, and substitute this here to see if it's going to give you 15 over 4. And it does. 
so that is your answer and that you get four marks and you have 16 in total and that is the end of the video and you have your 16 marks as you can see that it's easy to get uh, the 16 the 16 marks you just have to apply the basics and they won't change doesn't matter if it's included in another graph that is you have your exponential and the parabola in one graph you still apply the same basics so thank you for watching please subscribe and support